Hello everyone! Today we're taking a look at the coolest dock ever. The Power Bay Ethernet is a super compact dock that already comes with the GameCube ports as well as the Ethernet port for online play. It also has many other functions built in. I'll show them later on. This is probably the simplest unboxing ever. All you get in the box is the power bay. You can get the newest firmware and see the manual by scanning these QR codes here. And I love the design of the power bay. It looks like a tiny GameCube. And you have the two GameCube ports here sideways as well as two other USB ports. In the back you have the Ethernet port, the HDMI and the power inputs. The USB connector is protected by the small cover here and the port is flexible to avoid cracks on your switch or the dock. You have the turbo button here in the front and it's also used to access the other functions. One cool detail is that the handle can be removed and used to change the angle of the dock. By placing it on the back you'll have a 90 degree angle. And by placing it in the front, you'll have an increased angle for using it on lower desks. Compared with the original dock, the power bay is super small, almost half size. And it has all of the same ports, with the exception of the USB 3.0, which was replaced by the Ethernet port. And the biggest selling point of this dock is that it enables the use of GameCube controllers in the tabletop mode. By pressing the turbo button in the front, you can enable turbo for the GameCube controllers. You can set the turbo for multiple buttons at the same time. And since this dock doesn't cover up the screen, you can add the original GameCube adapter and enable four more ports for six player smash. The Power Bay also has an extra mode, which enables you to use the GameCube controller as if it was a Pro controller. This mode can be accessed by holding the turbo button for 5 seconds, 
In this screen here you can see that the icon is a GameCube controller. And now the Switch is seeing the GameCube controller as if it was a Pro controller. The start button is now a home button. And here's one small detail that changes when you're using this mode. The L and R buttons aren't analog anymore and the full press will register as the analog sticks L3 and R3. The Z button alone also won't work, but by holding it down, it will change the L and R to ZL and ZR. Here's what each button and each combination does in the Pro Controller mode. In this mode, you can use a GameCube controller in games that doesn't support it. The buttons will be a little bit weird depending on the game you're playing. Like here on Mario Odyssey, the button for throwing the cap feels a little bit out of place. And I tried using the system's button remap function, but sadly it won't work. As expected, it works fine with the docked mode too. And I know how everyone is worried about third-party docks breaking their consoles. But for the power bay, Brook Gaming has purchased global insurance for their products. And they claim that if your switch is not modded in any way, and you use only the original AC adapter, Brook Gaming will take care of the repairs. And if they can't fix it, they will replace your switch. And the power bay can get even better as it can dock your smartphone. Making it the perfect device for playing emulators and other Android games on the big screen. And I know what you're thinking, does the GameCube port work with the smartphone as well? The answer is yes, it works pretty well, even with the Dolphin emulator. But there's a catch, currently it only works in the Pro Controller mode. The L and R buttons works as a full press, you won't have the analog response here. And the Z button by itself won't work, only when combined with the L or R buttons. All of the other buttons work just fine. If the game you're playing doesn't do heavy use of the shorter buttons, it will be just fine. And how about using it with the GameCube mode? Well, I tried changing the modes here and setting the Dolphin to use the GameCube adapter. And as you can see here, it detected the ports in the power bay as a GameCube adapter. But for some reason, it won't work at all. And here's what's really weird. If you connect the original GameCube adapter and use the ports on that one instead, it will work just fine. The Z button will work and you will have analog response on the triggers. I contacted Brook Gaming about this issue and told them how great it would be if you could use the GameCube ports on Dolphin while maintaining the analog triggers. They replied saying that they will provide an update that will solve any compatibility issues. I will do a follow-up video if that update comes out. And here's some direct footage showing the quality of this dock. The image is just perfect, at 1080p and 60 frames per second. But the dock supports up to 4K too.
the image you're seeing now is at 720p at 60 fps due to the limitations on my capture card. But I can change it to 1080p at 30 fps to show the full quality. And here's some other games running on it. Twilight Princess is a little bit slow on my device, but you can easily fix that by changing it back to the 1x native resolution. Finally, let's test the Ethernet port. On my original dock, I used an USB 3.0 adapter, which is faster than the original Nintendo one. Here's the speed on wireless connection. Now let's change it to wired. we get 35. Now let's see the results with the power bay dock. Twenty is a little bit lower, so let's redo the tests. Still around 20, so let's turn back to the original dock and see if this was an oscillation problem on my internet. Yep, now we're getting 20 on the original dock too. So the power bay is on par with the original dock, and that first result was probably a problem on my end. As always, let's finish off with a teardown and see what's inside. It has some weights in the base, which is good to keep everything stable. The board seems well built, and the connections on the HDMI port and power plug are reinforced. The Rocker Gaming channel did a teardown on this dock too, and on his teardown, he noted that the connection on the ports could be reinforced for extra resistance, and I'm glad to see that they did listen to that. The capacitors used though are still of the stone brand, and I agree that it would be better to use Rubicon capacitors here. Let's see the other part of the board. The flat cable holding the USB-C connector is pretty long, 
and the soldering here isn't really fast though. This is another part accessible to damage, so it would be good to see the solder reinforced here too. And the flat connections are glued in place in both connectors. It won't release that easily. And that's it! The power bay is my favorite dock so far. I've been playing a lot with emulators on my smartphone lately, and it is simply perfect to take out your Switch, plug in your smartphone and enjoy those games on the big screen. It is also super portable and very easy to take it with you anywhere, not to mention the extra functions of the GameCube ports and the presence of the Ethernet plug, making this the best Switch dock you can have right now. And you have three versions of the Power Bay with different price points. The Power Bay Ethernet, that is the one that I just reviewed, the Power Bay Bluetooth, which supports up to two headsets, and the Power Bay Crimson, which is the economic version and doesn't have Ethernet port or Bluetooth support. I'll leave the links in the description. By buying with the links below, you're helping the channel with no additional costs. If you like my content, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment or a like, and share it with your friends. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.